Hello and welcome to another episode of Conflict on Camera. And over the course of these shows, we've had guests from Hong Kong, Australia, USA, Canada, Poland, Stalingrad. But today, my guest is coming from two rooms away in the same house that I live in. Because it's my other half, Magli Deken, a Normandy tour guide, and she's going to talk about a photo taken in San Lo in the summer of 1944. Hello, Paul. Pleased to be here. So, Mag, we are talking about this very famous photo that has been reproduced a lot. You see it on the internet, you see it on the covers of books. Um, where was it taken and when was it taken? Well, you're right. This picture is one of probably the most iconic picture of the Battle of Normandy. It was taken in Salo, Rue des Noyers, exactly, by American reporters in August 1944. And the picture shows two kids watching a Jeep and a Citroën on a road that got cleared by bulldozers. August 1944, meaning it was taken nearly two months after the massive bombardments Salo suffered on June the 6th and 7th. And we talk a lot about the casualties in Normandy and the suffering of the civilian population, both before the invasion, during the invasion, and indeed during the Battle of Normandy. So in La Manche, and Saint-Lô is the capital of La Manche, and La Manche is a department in France, how many civilians were killed in that time? Well, there's an estimation just for that night of at least 400 civilians killed during those bombardments. And well, most of the people had to leave the town anyway. We know that only by the end of the year, 3,000 of the 12,000 civilians of Salo were able to come back. So within the region of Normandy, it's estimated that about 20,000 civilians were killed. Is that correct? Yes, which represent a third of the French losses. The French losses to bombardments in World War II. Yeah. So the photo was taken from the Chateau ramparts in saint Lô. So this photo was discussed last week on the We Have Ways of Making You Talk podcast with James Holland and Al Murray, and they talked about its significance as a representation of the destruction of Normandy. But you, Mag, you were born in saint Lô. So what do you see when you look at that photo? When I look at that picture, I could not help to think about the kids, the civilian side, to think about my parents, who were about the age of the two kids that you can see on the picture. And for me, those two kids, in a way, they're facing their future. You know, they are uh, facing the ruins of Salo, their hometown. And in a way, they are facing their future and everything that has to be rebuilt. They're safe, they're free now, but the price of their freedom is going to be high. Salo, it's so emblematic of what happened specifically in Normandy, but, you know, in other part of France and other part of uh, Europe. Salo was a beautiful town before the war. And the way it was rebuilt, and it's going to take 20 years to rebuild it, and the new town that was rebuilt doesn't look much like the old one. We're talking about 95% of the town that got destroyed. Because before rebuilding, you also need to destroy, you know. So not much is left from what it was. And it's in 48 that the first stone was put in saint Lô, And it had lost a large part of his charm of its charisma. So I, I was born there, I spent the first 12 years of my life, and I was actually born in the hospital called the American Memorial Hospital that was inaugurated in 1956, and at the time it was considered the most modern hospital in Europe. So the photo was taken two months after the D-Day bombardments in August. So the two kids in the photo, how did they come to be back in the city they grew up in on that particular day? So the two kids, we now have their names. It's going to take 70 years for the, the kids to be identified. Max Robin, who's 13 years old, so the oldest one, who's holding his young brother, Jean, who was nine at the time. So Max and Jean... Uh, were back in saint Lô after two months of wandering with their mom through La Manche, trying to, uh, well, in a way, stay away from combats and battle that were going around them. So that day, they had the opportunity to come back to check what's left of their home. 
This is when they met those two American reporters who were taking pictures. And the two reporters asked them to pose on that tree overlooking that road facing the vehicle. So one is a, an American Jeep and the other one is a Citroën. We also can tell that it's about two months after the bombardment because it's been cleared. You know, bulldozers have been able to clear the rubbles and roads are accessible again. So those two kids are back after two months and they're also looking for their dad, who they last saw June the 10th. This is where the picture has so much more than we think, because in fact, their dad named Raymond, Raymond Robin, who was 37 years old, uh, was part of a very active resistance group. And on June the 10th, he left the family, he left Saint-Lô to join the group. 11 members of that group will be captured and shot by SS, probably, on June the 15th, 20 kilometers away from Salo. So this resistance network, as you say, on June the 10th, their activities were interrupted by the Germans and they were shot. So explain more about where this village is and what we know of the circumstances of the father's death. So this resistance group were created at the very beginning of the war and Raymond Robin worked at the PTT, which is telecommunication in France, and uh, lots of resistance groups started in the, the PTT or the transport as well. So like most of the group resistance, you know, they are in charge of sabotaging and getting information. So June the 10th, with the members of that group, they went to Bocoudre, which is 20 kilometers south of Saint-Lô. And this is where they will be captured and shot. And their bodies were buried in a field and took a few months before we were able to, to find the bodies. Today, there is a big memorial over there in Bocoudre, a memorial that we discovered last year, the two of us. And it was built exactly where the bodies were buried. And the General de Gaulle was there for the uh, inauguration of the monument in 1947. And this is the, when people come to Normandy, they often look at the monuments to the Allied units there. But actually, there are quite a few monuments around Normandy that honour the French civilians who were both killed in the bombardments and in this case killed. And we must emphasise when we say shot, we mean shot after being captured. I mean, firing squad. This is not just shot like shot in the battle. This is murder. They were murdered by the Germans, possibly the SS or possibly a, a regular German infantry unit. So, Mag, let's bring it back to the children themselves, because at the point this photo was taken, they do not know what happened to their father yet. They've been asked to pose for this photo for the American press. But as you said earlier, it took 70 years for their identity to be established. How did that happen? The daughter of one of them just contacted the city of Saint-Lô and explained that it was her father and her uncle that were on that picture as kids. So you're right. At the time of the picture, they don't know yet what happened to their dad. They're going to find out about it a few days later. And in fact, they're going to leave the region and they were living in the south. So it's only in 2014 for the 70th anniversary that Max was able to come back and he was part of the celebration in Saint-Lô. Uh, he was probably the first surprised and honoured, and uh, he passed away a few, few years ago. So the city of Saint-Lô is often referred to as a city of ruins, certainly here in Normandy. Explain to our viewers who came up with that name. It comes from the Irish author Samuel Beckett, who had the opportunity with the Red Cross to spend two years after the war in Saint-Lô. The Red Cross established an hospital in Saint-Lô and took care of the population over there. He spent two years there and uh, he wrote about it and he called Saint-Lô the city of ruins. So there's a good Waiting for Godot connection there for our viewers, the writer Samuel Beckett. So thank you for a brilliant explanation about those two kids and what happened to their father and about the city. But to end this show, when you, as someone who was born in San Lo, look at that photo and you see what's in it, where some people see the rubble and the destroyed town, you look at the kids. What's your feeling? Well, I immediately think about what those young kids had to go through for the last five years. It's the war, the German occupation, the bombardments, the liberation, finding themselves in the middle of combat. And it's a way to pay attention to civilians. It's going to take a long time to really consider the civilians, their loss. Uh, of course, everybody's thrilled to be liberated, but 
the civilians had to pay a heavy price for that. So let's not forget about it. Both my parents were about the same age. They were nine and 10 and they were living near Utah Beach. So they went through that exact same experience. And probably as an adult now, and of course, being a tour guide, uh, quite often I've been thinking about how resilient kids are and try to understand a bit more what my parents had to go through and how scary that childhood was and the sacrifices they had to endure. So that has been a cracking little episode of Convict on Camera. And Mag, you're going to come back on and do another photo very shortly. We're going to talk about San Mark Cooper Village behind Utah Beach, which was one that, again, suffered terrible civilian casualties during the bombardment. And Mag will come on and talk about that at some point in the future. It remains for me to say thanks to Mag for joining. Thanks to everybody for watching. And don't forget to consider becoming a patron. Don't forget to share what we're doing on social media. Subscribe to the channel and maybe even check out our merchandise. Thank you, Mag. This is Paul Woodard for World War II TV saying thank you very much for watching.